Oh, what's up tribe? Thank you for being here and welcome to my channel. Today's post is titled Humor and as it's a dialogue between Matthias and his higher self, I'll be referring to Matthias as me and his higher self as I am. I am knock knock me question mark I am I said talk talk me. Hmm. Who is it? I am. Talk. Talk. Me. Who is it? I am. Talk. Talk. Me. Who? I am. Your obsessive compulsive disorder. Me. Oof. I don't know if the joke is good or bad. I am. The good thing is... <laughs> The good thing is that he doesn't lie. Me. Do I have an OCD? I am. Is there anyone who doesn't have one? Me. I guess it's something for everyone in different measures. What exactly is an OCD? I am. A disorder is a mental or emotional psychopathy that implies turning around once I'm on the other side, behind. That is, it cannot go straight as stipulated, that it goes against the current, and therefore it cannot fit with the social harmony or collective behavior considered normal. Obsession comes from the word siege, that is to say, a thought that settles fixedly in the mind and does not go away. It remains sharp and compulsive basically is that it is repeated incessantly as it's a constant pulse like the heartbeat. Thus, an obsessive compulsive disorder can range from biting nails to not being able to step on lines on the ground in the street and having to always walk on flat sides because otherwise a person can die. Me. Can a person die? I am. Depending on the disorder, if the person does not do what his mind and emotion tell him, terrible things can happen. Me. I think now I remember an OCD I had. When I was a child, and even today, it sometimes happens to me, although not so much anymore. When we were driving in a car and I looked out the window, I had to take a gentle bite with my incisor teeth every time we passed a tree, as if counting them with the grinding of teeth. I am. Luckily, there are no forests in the Argentine Pampa. Otherwise, you would live in the dentist. Me. <laughs> yeah, I thought so many times. I think that since I lived in Europe, that disorder disappeared. I remember that a friend during college had developed the OCD of having to close all the doors, windows and cupboards perfectly. And every time she got up to the bathroom, we would open everything for her and leave it in the middle. <laughs> he despaired, then he left. I think it was due to the stress of the study. Also, a friend from school had the OCD of telling jokes after each sentence. He made us laugh, but I realized that he did it to hide sadness. One day, laughing nonstop, I told him, you don't have to make me laugh. I know you want to cry because of what happened to you. That broke him. He started crying. And then he no longer made jokes every 10 minutes. He made them every so often, but we could already talk. I am. What do they all have in common? Me. We were all nervous or sad. We were all stressed under pressure and we did not know where to make it out. 
I am the brain, as we have said, is an organism developed to store and interpret data. It seeks to order things to find harmony, symmetry, balance, and only then will it feel that it fulfills its function. When you hide something in the depths of the subconscious, out of disgust, out of sadness, because you are overwhelmed, when you cannot consciously process things and hide them in the shadows, all that energy that the brain has to solve the problem must be applied to something. Thus, the subconscious seeks reactions to order ideas, things, thoughts, situations. And in this way, the tension ceases to be on the focus to be resolved and falls back on something banal, but without any value, but which receives the weight of everything that lies inside. What did you feel when you counted trees with your teeth? Me, that I connected them. I felt that if I didn't do it in any of them, there were things that were loose, like holes in a fabric. I was desperate to think that they were not all connected to that invisible network. I am the pressure you felt as a child with what your guides, teachers and memories transmitted to you about the reconnection of the network. The responsibility of making thousands of people listen to you, having to show yourself to the world the questions of how you would achieve it, how to face the shame that the public gave you, manage to go all those parts of the world that seem so far away, how? To all of it, a 12-year-old could not handle so much responsibility. So your brain quieted it by counting and connecting trees with the teeth that you would use to speak and show yourself to the world. So your brain quieted it by counting and connecting trees with the teeth that you would use to speak and show yourself to the world. Me, I've never seen it like this. Now it makes a lot of sense. So it was myself trying to protect myself from pressure, from stress. I am. What your mind does is protect itself by creating a parallel reality in which to put all the focus. Remember, your body only cares about living and surviving. It does not care about your spiritual search or transcendence of being because it was designed to protect itself from threats and to keep you alive as long as possible. And sometimes it must even protect itself from the truth. Will understand that they have been useful to stay alive and therefore will find comfort and security in lies. Making the truth a threat that can bring chaos, destruction, discomfort. Thus the brain, the emotion, prefer to deny that reality and create a fiction, a lateral reality, whereby tension is released. Me. Wow. It's awesome. I am. All religion, culture, scientific thought, spirituality, philosophy, ideology, are parallel realities created to cling to a sense of security based on more digestible lies. Me, but you just put science, a factual and objective study, in the same bag as religion. How's that? I am. Anything that is considered separate from the other is a parallel survival thought. I did not say science but scientific thought. We have spoken that emptiness, nothingness, is the only thing that unites us all as one. The rest are only lateral projections. 
me, I understand. So the brain, the emotion, creates illusory feelings and ideas that release the tension of the conflict so as not to have to face a possible collapse of its defense system. I am, exactly, the brain develops one of the most powerful psychological tools of lateral thinking. Me, which one? I am, humor. Me, make you laugh, in other words. I interpret that creating a parallel reality at the brain level is, for example, making a joke about something uncomfortable. I am. It's a way to begin to understand humor from a current perspective. Yes, as we have been talking about in a stressful or traumatic situation that involves too much effort on the part of the body to resolve, the brain looks for a different way to release tension. Psychologically, this can be seen with jokes. Humor has different re- Humor has different ramifications, from the healthiest to the darkest, and all of them generate a different way of facing reality that they are not willing to take as absolute truth. Humor, being funny, is a way to relax, to release tension in a rigid and tense environment. Me, like when a talk with a lot of information and tension about a topic to be discussed. The speaker makes a joke and the tension relaxes, making the information flow easier. I am. Humor creates a fictional reality that releases pressure from bodies and minds. The cultures that have suffered the most, those that have been the most deceived, Those that have gone through the most conflicts have developed a greater degree of humor than the most decisive people in their average population. Since it helps them to release constant tension by creating parallel realities, making them feel more comfortable in chaotic environments. For this reason, the Mediterranean, Caribbean, African and Latin areas of the Americas tend to have a population with higher degree of humor, while the people most link to the land in a sedentary way, such as indigenous people, Asians, or the cold order of the harsh winters of the northern countries, the mood is harsher and more closed, without going through so much the entire population. Me. This explains why in painful or uncomfortable situations, many tend to seek humor to get out of tension, and also why great humorists are usually people who su- are usually people who have suffered a lot. I am humor is an escape route from a brain and soul in constant tension. Me. But what about the humor they call black or dark? I mean, there are many types of humor. Laughing at others, laughing at situations, laughing at oneself, laughing at tragedies. And many times humor generates more problems than it solves, creating more tension. Something hotly debated today is the limits of humor. Is there a limit to humor? I am. No. The limit is established by morality, and morality is related to a social and community agreement. Humor is inherent to the human and cannot be prohibited by ideological law. Now, what happens today? The reason for debating the limits of humor is due to the large numbers is due to, is due to the large number of conflicts. The problems and tensions have ceased to be local for 10 years and have all become global. You could tell me that global conflicts affect us all since colonialism in the 15th century. 
But the truth is that until the free circulation of the internet on personal mobile devices, there was really no real globalization. Today, the collective problems are not just a possible war, but what Juanita told Pepito about his hair, and everyone can comment on Twitter and make a conflict that affects millions of people. Overexposure to conflicts of all kinds makes the use of humor more exasperated. If before a conflict generated three jokes, today it has a million conflicts generating three million jokes. All of those parallel realities will reflect the way everyone's psyche is trying to defend itself. Me. Oh, what chaos and something that seemed as simple as making people laugh. What is humor then? I am. Humor comes from the same root as human. Wet earth. Me. Really? I am. Humus. Humid. The way of how the wet earth became a joke is the following. In the early days of Greek philosophy, Aristotle pointed out that all bodies were composed of the four elements. The human was born from the earth from its chemical elements, but which at that time they could not understand. In turn, the water ran through it. All the ancient ideas said that the human had been born of the mud, between the water and the earth, molded by the gods. They had been given the fire that allowed the beat of their heart, the soul and their spirit in the air, the breathing. But later, the students of the human body, taking into account that the human was born from clay, divided the inner world of the body of man and woman into four different months that they called hemos, liquids. The Romans, they took this Greek idea and they kept it calling these four liquids as wetlands, humidity, differentiated as blood, yellow bile, black bile, and phlegm. These were known as the four humors that make up the human. But later, in the expansion of the empire, the Dr. Galen affirmed the existence of a fifth humor, the quintessence, which he called Numa, breathe, which gave rise to the concept attributed to the lung organ, thus respiration, from the Latin spiral, gave rise to the word spiritus, that is to say, the one who breathes the breath. Thus, the fifth humor would become an attribute of the soul which in Greek you know as Sige. The origin of everything that today you call psychological. For this reason, humor became part of an attribute of the soul, when in reality, its origin comes from the dark water inside the body, and they maintained it, calling it these four liquids. Me. That is why you associate humor with Scorpio. I am, exactly, the deep waters of your body, which contain the essence of your life, which do everything to keep you alive. They are the ones that awaken the mood of your soul. Humor, then, is an attribute of survival, which you have to turn into a tool of consciousness. The quintessence of your soul is to take the poison and turn it into medicine. Me, this is how healthy laughter? I am. From being an escape route to protect yourself, humor can save lives by freeing them from stress. Laughter, grace, 
seek to escape from reality, from conflict. And the more you run from conflict, laughter, humor will become a poison that will generate even more tension and conflicts in a world like today. But when you faced with conflict, you recognize that humor is key to organic healing as well as spiritual liberation. Me, human laugh, they told us on 11-11-2011. At the encounter of souls, the beings who spoke through me repeated it several times. Human laugh, now, or I understand today, today 101 of the alignment, the same code that those being used that magical day, 11-11. The Eryx Code, which is 101, and its teachers telling us, laugh, laugh humans, laugh humans, and you will be free. I am. Having a good mood goes much further than a good joke. Knock, knock. Me. Who is it? I am. I am. Me and the joke. <laughs> I am. Do you see me with a humorous face? Me. Maybe you could use being a little wet every so often. I am. I think I understood. Me. It's called a green joke and it has nothing to do with the heart chakra. I am. Human laugh. Me. Laugh with me, spirit. 